So are you up there talking about y'all's class? No. Okay, what else well, are we going to talk about? Oh, oh, it's all my fault. Yeah, okay. It's all your fault. It's Bush's fault. All right, we're going to cover the last section of chapter 4 today. 4.6. So you are responsible for the test Tuesday. Well, we're going to go over a review test Tuesday. Uh, 4.2, 4.3, 4.4, and 4.6. Okay, so you might want to write that down. Where is my calibration? I restarted the daggum computer. Why didn't it? cover it. Now if y'all want to, we will. Sorry, my little calibration thing ain't up there, and I don't, I don't know how to do it. So
So that means five factorial or three, we'll start with three factorial. Three factorial is equal to three times two times one, which is equal to what? Six. Four factorial is equal to four times three times two times one. Let me ask you a question. Do you already know what 3 times 2 times 1 is? Yes, you know 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, right? So what is this right here? So 6 times 4 is 24. What do you think 5 factorial will be? 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Well, you already know what 4 times 3 times 2 times 1 is. So if you already know what that is, what's 5 times 24? 120. So somebody tell me what they think 6 factorial would be. Seven hundred and twenty. How'd you get that? Well, take six and multiply it times what? One hundred and twenty. And it should be seven twenty. So seven factorial would be what? Five thousand forty. Check it. I have no idea. Seven times this. Yeah. So seven factorial. Would be 5,040. 8 factorial would be 40,400. 40, Somebody check me. I have no idea if that's right. Was that what you got? No, that would be wrong because 8 times 5,000 ain't going to be 4,000. 4,000, 40,000, 40, I don't know what I said, but you know it's all. And so on. Why don't we use zero after one? Zero. All right, so that's why you don't use zero, because it can't do everything out. Um, now, everything that we're going to be doing in 4.6 revolves around this guy. Because anytime you're dealing with a permutation or a combination or anything like that, you end up using factorial. Now, in your book, there is a page, I think it's 176 or let me find it. Well, we'll just start from the first One seventy five. Go ahead and mark the bottom of one seventy five. That's two definitions. Now you don't have to write them word for word. A permutation is an arrangement of sequence in no and with order. Arrangement of sequence with order. A combination is arrangement of sequence with no order. And you can you can write that down if you want to, but all that's just a lot of stuff that you don't need. Permutation is an arrangement of sequence with order, and a combination is arrangement of sequence without order. And make sure you do the highlight on permutation with with order, and do a highlight a combination without order, so you know that that's the only difference between the two. Now the only other thing I want you to make note of in your book is page 176. And this is very important. This kind of helps you that's all I can do right there. 
make a note of number one, number two, number three, and number five. I don't do number four um, because in my opinion number three and number five is more important than number four. Now, if you don't have a book, M times N is what we call fundamental rule of counting rule. Fundamental rule of counting. Basically, if you have, let's say you have an alarm, uh, a, a lock or something that you have to punch a code in, and let's say that you have to punch one letter and one number. Okay, and the number has to be between zero and nine. All right, so you can write that down in, as, as an example. Uh, key code for a, I don't know, a bicycle lock or a whatever, you have to punch in one letter, glitter, can't even spell that, and one number, zero through nine. And then how many different combinations can you have with one letter and one number zero through nine. All you do is you take 26 and multiply it by 10. Now most of you should see where these numbers come from because first thing comes out, whatever, first thing that pops out is 26 because there's what? 26 letters in the what? Alphabet. Now where does the 10 come from? How many numbers do you have right here? 10. So 26 times 10 is what? 260. Simple problem, simple math. This is a simple rule. Just multiply the two numbers. So what if I had to choose between 0 and 15? Or 0 and 14, I'm sorry. That would be 26 times 15. Or if I had to pick A through K and then 0 through 9. Well, A through K, A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, K. That'd be 10 times what? 10 would be 100. So you have 100 combinations. And what are they talking about 100 combinations or 260? Well, A1 through what? A9, oh, I'm sorry, 0. B, 0 through 9. C, 0 through 9. And so on. So you can have A1, A2, A3, A4, A5, A0, whatever. Or you can have B, 0, so and so. So if you think about it, 26, each one of these times 10, 1 times 10, that's your combinations right there. So that would be 26 times 10, and that's how many different combinations you would have. And that's what you're doing in this section. Another thing that we could talk about, and that's an example of the fundamental rule, what if we had a letter, I meant, uh, Miss Martin, what's your first name? Gwen, I spell your name. G W Y N E. Well, it's not too good of a name to use because it has the double letters, but how many different words can you make up? Now, I didn't say meaningful words, I just said words, five letter words. How many five letter words can you make up using? G W Y N N. Well, that would be five factorial, which is the factorial rule. Five factorial basically means how many was five factorial a while ago? A while ago? 
120. So there's 120 five-letter words you could make up with when. Would they all mean something? No. They would just be gibberish. Now you might get a few, but I was thinking you could use them. I'm sorry. Um, how about how about smile? Smile. It's how many letters? Five letters, so it'd be 120. But what's one word that you can get out of smile? Smile. smile. That's why it's the longest word. You know, the joke. What's the longest word? Smile. Tell us about smile. Anyway, <laughs> smile does have one word that has meaning to it. That's smile. Uh, what else? Meal. No. Miles. Me. Uh, less. No, that's that's too. too less. But anyway, there's gibberish, and then there's words with meaning. Uh, this gives you the gibberish. That gives you how many different combinations. And I don't know what they do here. What do they say? This is order. They say in order of different items. This rule of place. Okay, I don't know what they say. Okay, five letters. The number of ways that five letters, okay, A, B, C, and D. But I just chose the name. And then, then you're talking about minor, minor. Well, here's the big one, and here's the big one. That's what's going to be on your test. You might have one of these and one of these on your test, but you're going to have five or six of these and five or six of these. They're not hard. They're not rocket science. 4.2 through 4.5 4 is harder than this. These you just put in the calculator. So make sure you have a graphing calculator, a statistical calculator, or an app on your tablet or phone that has NPR and NCR. My phone is blowing up, so I'm going to have to see what's going on. Okay. NPR is for permutations, and NCR is for combinations. Also, the Excel spreadsheet permute, I think it's permute, and combine. Those are the two words you can use in the Excel spreadsheet, and I'll show you how to do that in case you don't have an app or a calculator. Now, some of your TIs, the not graphing calculators, TI30, you may have it on there. You have to look above the keys. It may be NPR. And it's, it's on a lot of calculators that are not graphing. So check your calculator. Get them out and check them because I'm going to tell you, you don't want to do it by hand because it can be kind of a pain. Okay. So, what is the formula? Well, they're right here. Here's the first formula. N factorial over N minus R factorial. That's for permutation. And then your combination just has one more. And it's just got an extra R factorial right here. That's the only difference between the two. So N factorial over N minus R factorial times R factorial. Now again, I really don't want you to do it by hand, 
because honestly with some of the big numbers you're talking 30 and 40 factorial that'd be 30 times 39 I mean 30 30 times 29 times and that's just the pain so does anybody have a TI 30 or something like that does it have it let me see it because I've I've seen it on the TI-30. going to show you how to do it on the calculator. That's what I'm fixing to show you. So let's take, for instance, let me do an example of a problem. Let's say that I want to, I'm going to win the lottery. Okay? So I'm going to go and buy me a ticket and I've got to get uh, four numbers in order from 1 to 63. And then I've got to get one number that's 1 to 40. So this is your four numbers and this is your Powerball or whatever. So what is your, what is your odds of winning if you buy one ticket? Now let's go with Tinkler. No, let's go with one. One ticket. Now, some of you, granted, have no earthly idea how the lottery works and you don't know how to do the numbers. And that's okay. We'll go through and do it. But I'm just trying to get you to find the, the odds. Priority one message coming in on secure channel. Okay. Let's see if we can get this one to work. Okay. Let's see if we can get this one to work. Let's see So, the way that you do a lottery, or the Powerball, or a lottery that you win a lot of money on, for those who don't know, is you're given a sheet of paper, something like this, and that's one number, that's two numbers, three numbers, four numbers, and then the Powerball. And you got little, you know, the, what do you call them things that you fill in for tests? Bubble sheets, or whatever you call them. What do you call it? Scantron. Alright, it looks just like a Scantron. I ain't never, I don't do fool with those things. Scantron. So you have one, what numbers did I give you? One on the first four. One to 63. So you got little bubbles like that. One to 63, like that. And you fill in whatever number you want on the first number. And then the 
second one, one to 63, you pick a number. One to 63, you pick a number. One to 63 in little bubbles. And then they run it through the Scantron. One through 40 on the last one. And you fill out your one bubble down here. And then you run it through. And then they give you a little ticket. It looks like this. It says lottery with a barcode on it. And it's got your numbers written right there. And then you wait for the lottery to do the ping pong balls. And they do the ping pong balls on 11 o'clock at night. And then you go to the store next day. And you can try to look at the numbers, but you end up, I, I can't do it. So I just, well, I usually buy 10 at a time. And I just take, take the ticket and I put it under the little barcode reader at the store and it tells me that I lost and I only won like a dollar and, and I get mad and go out and get drunk and pass out in the ditch somewhere. <laughs> All right. So that's how you play. So how do you figure the odds? Well, it's going to be a permutation because I said it's got to be what? In order. I want to know the probability of having the four numbers in order. Ooh, what's that word? And the one number that I need to win the whole jackpot. What does and mean? Multiplying here. That's right, class. Glad y'all remembered it. So that would be 63 permutation 4 times 40 permutation 1. All under, where'd that 1 come from? Where'd this 1 right here come from? I bought one ticket. And that is essential for you to get this problem right. There are a lot of SA teachers that will put five or six of these problems on a test, and they'll put that last sentence that says, you bought one ticket. And what students will do is they'll write this number down for the answer, and the teacher will do what? Mark the whole problem wrong because you didn't put it all under one. You bought one ticket. All right? I don't... I don't mark all of it wrong, I mark half of it. So if you, if you want to try to get points from me, you're only going to get half, because I don't give you whole points for not putting it under one, I don't give you half. I don't know what the test will do, so I don't know if they mark it all wrong or not. So, let's do it on the calculator. So, we take our handy dandy calculator or our phone, whichever one you want to call it. Priority one message and in on we hit, channel. I don't forgot the numbers, 63. And then I hit, all right, here we go, math. Reach over to probability and hit MPR, which is two. And that's what it should look like. And then you're going to hit, how many numbers, four? Four digits or four spots? And that's equal, hit enter. That's equal to that BA number. Now to keep from typing it in again, hit second, enter. And that'll give you the previous entry and you can arrow back and type in 40. One, which would be 40. And now you can take 40 Hit the multiplication symbol and type in 142959 So, you're going to be a winner. One over 571,838,400. You got a better shot at getting hit by a bus walking out of this building than you do of winning the lottery. But we're going to do something different after this problem. Let y'all think a little bit. Equal to 1 over, and what is that? What did I say? 5, 7, 1, 8, 3, 8, what? 
400. That's it. And somebody give me that decimal. It's going to be like 0 to the, or 0 0.5 to the 10th power or something. What is it? One point seven times ten to the ninth, so that'd be eight spaces, so that'd be seven, so that'd be point Z one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one point what? Seven yeah, buddy. Now let's do something fun. Let's let's learn something for real life. Let's go and let's look at a handy dandy South Carolina lottery. What some of y'all are going to school on. Where is my. There we go. www.scdducatinlottery. Is it dot org or dot com? Ah, got it right. All right, here we go. The Powerball. I want you to look at this right here. This is like a question. I want you to find the pro the odds against winning. The read number one, and then I want you to assume you buying one ticket. Number Now this is the Powerball lottery, so this is the one that we do in South Carolina. Now some of y'all may not remember this. I think in 1994, but somebody can Google it and look it up, is when South Carolina adopted the lottery. Mr. Nelson may remember. I, I remember because we had a governor that didn't want it, but he said, I don't want the lottery. But I'll support whatever you want. I ain't gonna mention his name, but it was Beasley. And the whole state was in an uproar because we wanted the lottery. The, the state wanted the lottery, but we had a bunch of politicians and a bunch of people saying that we don't need the lottery because I'll tell you why, but basically they said we didn't need the lottery. I'll tell you why after we So what's the numbers go to with the first five? One to what? One to fifty nine and one to thirty five. One 
five numbers, one to 59, and then one Powerball number, one to what? 35. You're buying one ticket, which I think is $2 now. So that would be one over uh, 59 combination, because it's no order, of five times, um, just say 35, because that's going to be 35 combination of one, which is 35, so I'll just go ahead and just write 35 right there. And somebody give me that BA number on the bottom. Just call out the numbers, okay? I don't need you to tell me thousands or hundreds. Just call them out. I'm going to have to wait a minute. Okay. Do you have it? What is it? Well, somebody give me the, what y'all got? You just that times that, and then you want that number? I want the number in the denominator. Okay. And then I'm going to ask you to do the fraction. Alright, 1752235102. Now hold on a minute. Did everybody get that? It's 10 after the 5. I got a 0 right there. 1, 1, 5, 1, 0. 1, 5, 0. 5, 1, 0. <laughs> there you go. Okay, so. 1 over 175,223,510. And tell me what that decimal is. Is point, how many zeros? Well, what's the uh, exponent raised to? Do 1 divided by that VA number. What do you get? 9. 9? And what is the number? 5.7. 5. 5.7, 5. so that'd be 8 zeros. I got, I got 6 at the end. Yeah, but she's got a different decimal point than you do. Oh, you got 0.57 and she's got 5.7, right? What does your calculator say? <laughs> um, a bunch of zeros and then six. How many zeros? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, after the point. Yeah, she's got it in scientific notation, which is Oh, gotcha. Okay, so that's eight zeros and we'll say six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then six. All right, let's say, first of all, let me tell you why people didn't want South Carolina to get the lottery. South Carolina, Mississippi. They don't want South Carolina, Mississippi to get the lottery. Anybody know why? What does South Carolina and Mississippi have in common? Think of what we're always rated as. South Carolina and Mississippi. Last in what? Last in education. So that means that everybody lives in South Carolina is what? Stupid. We're racist and we're stupid. Okay? So the politicians that know more than we do, they said that we couldn't handle the lottery because we would spend all our money on the lottery because we're all so stupid. Because they know more than we do because they know how this works. So they, they thought that we were all Bubba's. So Bubba goes and buys a lottery ticket and says, and he doesn't buy it, he thinks to himself, he says, well, hey, if I buy more tickets, I can up my probability of winning. Of course, he wouldn't use the word probability, he would have said chances of winning. So he goes and buys 100 tickets, or he thinks about buying 100. And that would be 100 over the same thing. Don't reach for the calculator, people, because you got two zeros. You just move the two zeros to the left. And instead of eight zeros, you got what? And then he says, well, what about, I'll go, I'll go and borrow some money. And I'll borrow $1,000 instead of going to the fair. 
I borrowed the money to borrow the money to go to the fair like I do every year. I borrowed the money to uh, buy lottery tickets. So that's a thousand. And he thinks to himself, that'll up my And then he says, I'll just borrow a million dollars. That's seventy five percent interest. That's what these people think about. And that gives you a million over whatever. Over that big number, which is equal to and that bumps it down to how many different zeros are going to be three and thirty three more. So that'd be point zero zero six. Now, my question to you is this. In real life, meaning practical application, what do we usually round our decimals to? In real life. Think of money. Two decimals, the hundreds, right? 35 cents, 45 cents, 55 cents. We don't go uh, 44.9 cents. We go 45 cents. So, tell me what that tells you. Sum that up for me. Yeah, zero means nothing. If what? Even if you buy a million tickets, your probability of winning is still the same as what? So who's the dummy? The guy paying a million dollars to win or the guy paying a dollar to win? The guy paying a dollar because he's only got a dollar in the game the other guy's got a million. And the probability is still zero. Where does it start changing? Well, with this particular problem, it starts changing around two million. Take two million and divide by that number right there. What do you get? So, of course, just buy two million tickets and you've got a 1% chance. How logical is that? Not very, because if you have two million dollars to buy two million tickets, you're not worried about losing it anyway. Think about it. That'd be somebody like Bill Gates. You know, even though he would, he would have more sense than that. Somebody that has billions of dollars, they don't see anything losing two, two million. But Bubba, he don't need to borrow a million dollars because he's wasting his money. And that's why the politicians down in Columbia did not want us to have the lottery because we would go out and buy all these tickets and waste our paycheck and we'd have a bunch of kids running around starving to death. And we didn't have enough sense to know how many not to buy. Don't you love politicians? So, are you going to buy a bunch of lottery tickets now or just buy one? I would buy one, but I buy ten. So, I just buy ten just for the heck of it. And I don't play it very often. Usually when it gets up to 100, 150 million, I figure I could buy three pieces of equipment with that and pay off the house and buy me a new truck. So, that's what I... I, I measure it by that. How many pieces of equipment I can buy. Okay. Y'all are not going to talk to me. So. <laughs> no interaction. Let's see what the odds of winning are. Hello? 1 in 175,223,510. It's a miracle. Now I want you to do the Mega Million. And let's see which one is 
more probable of winning. There you go. I'm going to blow it up for you. Let's assume you're buying one ticket. If I won the Mega Million or the Powerball, y'all would know it. You would know it. I might buy y'all biscuit. I'd buy y'all each a hot dog. So what did y'all get? You can just do the one over. You don't have to do the decimal. What'd you get? Yeah. Good job. One over two hundred fifty-eight million eight hundred ninety thousand eight hundred fifty. Which one has the greater probability? Well, what did the Mega Million come out to be as far as decimals? Times 10 to the what? No, I got eight zeros. And point, okay, eight zeros and a four. Yeah. And the Powerball, sorry. And the Powerball came out to be eight zeros, point uh, six, right? So which one has the higher probability? The Powerball. So the Mega Million has less. So which one should you play if you're talking about probability? I would play the Powerball because it's got a higher chance of winning. Not much, but it's still zero. But Bubba ain't going to take it down to the 10,000th decimal point. Yeah. So there's your little bit of knowledge about the lottery.
Do you play the lottery for income or do you play the lottery for fun? You play it for fun. You don't play it for income. Even though the politicians think we all do. And our kids are running around playing in the road in the parking lot. With diapers on because we don't buy them any clothes because we spend all our paycheck on the on the uh, lottery. Well, a lot of the Yeah, and see that's what was so, that's what, I don't even want to talk about it. it. Made me mad because the video poker was the Marlboros or the crack cocaine of the gambling industry. I mean Marlboros were the crack cocaine of the tobacco industry and the crack cocaine is the crack cocaine of the drug industry. Well now it's methamphetamines because you can make it for like two cents, sell it for twenty. But anyway, the oh god, them poker machines was terrible. Alright, do this one. A corporation must appoint a president, chief executive officer, chief operating officer, and a chief financial officer. Basically, a president, a vice president, a secretary, and a treasurer. But you got to call them chief financial officer. It must also appoint a planning committee with five different members. There are 13 qualified candidates, and officers can be can also serve on the committee. Complete parts A through C. I don't care about A through C. I just want you to be able to do the first part and the second part. It says a corporation must appoint a president, chief executive officer, chief operating officer, and chief officer, or whatever. It must also appoint a planning committee. So a board and a committee. What's the difference between a board and a committee? Well, the board has the officers. Let's just say that. Um, how many officers are there? Four. What do you think about when you think about officers? Starts with O. They are in what? Order. So anytime you see officers, order. O, O. Officers, order. So that means you're going to use that there permutation. What's N? N is always going to be your bigger number. So which one's bigger? 4 or 13? 13. So do that part. That'd be a permutation. 13 permutation 4. And then you do the second part. And I gave you the first part. You do the second part. The committee. This is two examples of questions you'll have on the test, an officer question and a lottery question. Better go ahead and take the roll.
I got mad at my computer in the last class. I just let them go. My computer shut down three times. I can't work in this environment. So I just gave them the all attended. All right, y'all's class. Y'all are 24. Brabazon. Bright. Bright. Uh, I only see two browns. Um, I need you, first name. These two. Kelsey and. Okay. Oh, you are got to be cute. Okay, I see which one's not here. I thought there was two Daniels. I was like, really? Buchanan. And Campbell's here. Kato's here. Carwile. And Clayton's here. DeVoe is here. Freeman's here. Harbin's here. Harkness is here. Hawkins. Let's see Hawkins. Jones, Junkins is here, Kidd, Lane, Martin is here, McLean, I don't see her, Nelson is here, Powell is here, Schmidt is here, Scott, stands all, your daddy say I saw another day at the trash dump? I tried to run him off the road. Stelling? I'm kidding. He was in the parking lot. I'm surprised he recognized me. All right. First thing I said was, stand tall. I have no idea why we did that in high school. Why do we do half the things we do in high school? Better, at least we didn't go to your house and raid your refrigerator. We did that to Chris Sexton's house. Meatball house. His daddy's with the game's meatball. Huh? Yeah, I know I know exactly where you live. I threw beer beer bottles in your front yard. Anyway, no, I'm just kidding. Anyway, we'd go over to Meatball's house and Selma would cook for us. Selma was his mom on we just she'd be, she'd have two gallons of milk in there, and that milk would be gone. We'd be about five or six of us going over there. We eat spaghetti for practice. So at least you know, at least we didn't raid the Stancil's refrigerator. We just raided Sexton's. All right, y'all finished. Real simple, real easy. If you can't do it, then you're a failure. So that's going to be a follow up on frozen. Y'all see the mouse on there? There it is. Okay. All right. I'm going to just quit hitting freeze because evidently that's what messes this thing up. All right, so we've got uh, 13 permutation, 4. Will somebody give me that number. I'm sorry, 17, 160. Is that what y'all got? All right. Mr. Harbin ain't even doing it. He don't need to say, oh, yeah, I got it. I don't even know what day it is back there. <laughs> 17160. And I don't know if that's what it's asking for. 
And then the committee, how many different ways can the committee be appointed? The committee with five different members. Well, they're asking you to do different members. I'm not doing that one. Um, 13, combination four. Somebody do 13, combination four. I'm a, huh? 715. That's the two answers I'm looking for. Huh? 765. Oh, yeah, sorry. Thank you, smart, don't you? Well, that would be right for 64. I'm sorry. 1297. Thank you. 1297? 12. 1287. So on these, you don't have to put them over anything? No, because you don't, you're not trying to win anything. And you don't buy a ticket. It just says, I don't know. I don't know what B is. I think B is using uh, number four, the, the one that I told you we're not going to use. No, it's using combination. Okay. But are they... I don't know what they're... Let me get out of this. 1,000, there you go. Now what is the third one? What is the probability of randomly selecting committee members and getting the five youngest of the qualified candidates? Do they say anything on here about being the youngest? Corporation must appoint a president, chief executive, blah, 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 blah. Must also appoint a planning committee with five different members. There are 13 qualified candidates and officers can also serve on the committee. I don't know what would be considered youngest. Um... I don't know how you would do that with no information up here. Uh, is 20 young? Is 30 young? I mean, what do they say? I want to see this. Yeah, but what's the youngest? I don't understand how... From what? From one through thirteen. Uh, no, five. Well, what I'm saying is, okay, I see what they're saying. Five of the youngest, so that means the five youngest people. So that would be five, five, uh, no, it'd be five, thir five combination of five. Yeah. Five combination of five. That's what I would think. Where is C? Now I know what they now I know what they want. This says I I have no idea. I don't know. What is the possibility they randomly select me getting five youngest now, find the probability of randomly selecting the committee members and getting the five youngest of the qualified candidates. There are 252 different ways to appoint the committee. Alright, we're, we're going to go ahead and call class on that one. I, I just want the first two. We'll, we'll, we'll finish this Tuesday, okay?